Vanessa with the latest updated of Asian News. The Timorese government received 420 million US dollars support fund from the Millennium Challenge Corporation. July 2022, the Millennium Challenge Corporation, a U.S. independent agency, signed a compact agreement with the Timorese government to donate a support fund of 420 million U.S. dollars to Timor Leste. Details from the fund itself are to finance the clean water, sanitation, and drainage system, and also build a new center of excellence to train teachers in order to guarantee Timor Leste's education quality. Speaking to the national media, the United States Charged Affairs, Tom Daly said, the Millennium Challenge Corporation has provided financial support to 50 countries, including Timor-Leste, since Timor-Leste has met the full requirements, such as the good governance, corruption fight, and value the democracy rights. The MCA is the oversight for the implementation of the project. So the MCA, which will be made up mostly of government of Timor-Leste members, and of course the MCC will be working together on implementing the program. MCC evaluates many of the countries around the world based on those 18 factors, but they don't do their own evaluation. They actually use evaluations from other, other entities. And uh, Timor-Leste, I believe, was above the, the standard needed in 12 of the 18 categories this past year. Implementation of the compact agreement between the Millennium Challenge Corporation and the Timorese government will last for five years with a total budget of 484 million US dollars, where the 420 million US dollars funds will be dispersed from the Millennium Challenge Corporation and 64 million dollars are from the Timorese government. The compact projects of drinking water, sanitation, drainage system program will be implemented in the capital of Dili and four other municipalities which are close to Dili. It is believed that the project itself will be benefited 800,000 population. Malaysian ambassador pays a court visit to the Timor Leste Chamber of Commerce and Industry. The Malaysian ambassador to Timor Leste, Amarjit Sarjit Sung, said the purpose of the meeting is to introduce himself to the chairperson of Timor Leste's Chamber of Commerce and Industry in order to strengthen the relationship between Malaysia and Timor Leste. My today's visit is to introduce myself to the president and for us to be familiar with each other. I'm new here in Timor Leste, and it has not been a month since I came here to assume the role as Malaysia's ambassador to certify the great relationship between Malaysia and Timor Leste, including trade. I suppose this will be the next topic from now. I just need to be familiar with the president so that we can set a plan and see what can be obtained from the both countries' relationship. While the head of Timor Leste's Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Jorge Manuel de Araujo Serrano, said during the meeting, they discussed how Timor Leste's Chamber of Commerce and Industry and Malaysian Chamber of Commerce and Industry can cooperate in the economic sector. The ambassador wants to know about the country's economy, investment by the national entrepreneurs in the country, so that we can be ready for the future, open our doors to Malaysian investors. On November 2022, once he was elected as the Timorese Chamber of Commerce and Industry chairperson, the chamber has been visited by various foreign visitors, where the main focus on those visits how to develop cooperation in the economic sector. United States condemns Myanmar's decision to abolish 41 political parties. The United States condemned the decision by the Myanmar's ruling junta to abolish 40 political parties, including the former ruling party National League for Democracy. State Department Deputy Spokesperson Berant Patel told reporters that any election without the participation of all stakeholders in Myanmar cannot be considered free or fair. Uh, Simon, we strongly condemn the uh, Burma military regime's uh, decision to abolish 40 political parties, including, as you, you so noted, the National League for Democracy. Uh, any election without the participation of all stakeholders uh, in Burma uh, would not be and cannot be considered free or fair. And given the widespread opposition to military rule, the regime's unilateral push towards elections likely will escalate instability. Uh, we continue to support efforts by all of those working to establish genuine uh, and inclusive democracy uh, in Burma. Britain, Japan and Australia on last Wednesday also expressed their concern over the dissolution of Myanmar's former ruling party and urged a more inclusive process to return the countries to democracy. 
Myanmar's ruling junta on last Tuesday disbanded Aung San Suu Kyi's National League for Democracy and 39 other parties over their failure to meet a deadline to register for an election that is said to be extend the army's grip on power. According to the United Nations, Myanmar has been in turmoil since a military coup in early 2021. Indonesia president sad and disappointed after FIFA decided under-20 World Cup in Indonesia is cancelled. Indonesian President Joko Widodo said he was disappointed and sad after the world's soccer governing party FIFA stripped his countries of its rights to host the under-20 World Cup but said the decision must be respected. Last night, I received a report from the chief of PSSI that FIFA has decided to cancel the U-20 World Cup in Indonesia. We must respect the decision. I know this decision has disappointed the public. I too feel disappointed because of it, disappointed and sad. Dan, uh, FIFA made the call after Indonesia's Football Federation PSSI said it had cancelled the draw for the tournament because the governor of Bali refused to host Israel's team. In a video posted by his cabinet secretariat, Jokowi, as the president is popularly known, said he had instructed PSSI to work on avoiding FIFA's sanctions, including the chance to host other international events. The loss of a hosting rights will be a setback in Indonesia, where football has a massive following despite the lack of international success since qualifying for the 1938 World Cup as a Dutch East Indies. Jakarta residents lament removal of Indonesia as FIFA Under-20 World Cup host. Jakarta residents lamented FIFA's decision to strip Indonesia's of the right to stage this year's Under-20 Soccer World Cup tournament, saying the action was regrettable and should not have been influenced by politics. FIFA's decision to stop Indonesia holding the May 20 to June 11 event was taken after the country's football federation said the governor of the largely Hindu island of Bali had refused to host Israel's team. The loss of hosting rights will be a setback in Indonesia, where football has a massive following despite the lack of international success since qualifying for the 1938 World Cup as a Dutch East Indies. Naji Project returns to court for judicial review of his conviction. <laughs> Malaysia's top court delivered a verdict on application filed by former Prime Minister Najib Razak in which he is seeking a judicial review of his conviction for misappropriating money from the state fund when Malaysia development were hard. Applications for judicial reviews, which come after all other legal appeals, have been exhausted, have rarely been successful in Malaysia. Najib is currently serving a 12-year jail term as part of the graft conviction. Earlier in March, a Malaysian court had acquitted Najib of audit tampering in separate case he faces regarding the 1MDB scandal. Wildfire spread over the mountain in Thailand. A witness footage and pictures shows the steep mountain in Nakhon Nayok, two hours away from Bangkok, covered alight at night. Authorities have yet to identify what caused the blaze, but local sources told Reuters that they believe the fire might have been sparked from thunder strikes and strong winds which hit the area. Authorities deployed local forces including Khao Yai National Park officials, rescuers and volunteers to extinguish the fire and to build a fire break to prevent further damage. Locals said there were not many residents in that area, but wild animals will to be directly impacted by the fire. Ten people died because of fire on passenger ferry in the Philippines. The Coast Guard said ten people were killed and nine injured after a passenger ferry caught fire in the seas of the southern Philippine province of Basilan. Local media quoted the Coast Guard in southern Mindanao as saying 230 people were rescued in the fire that started in the air-conditioned cabin. The Coast Guard added it will assist in an investigation and safety assessment as well as check for any signs of an oil spill. Philippines, and an archipelago of more than 7,600 islands, has a poor record of maritime safety with vessels often overcrowded and many aging ships still in use. China and Singapore set benchmark of cooperation for regional countries. Chinese President Xi Jinping said China and Singapore as two important partners have set a benchmark of cooperation for regional countries and played an exemplary role. 
the Singaporean Prime Minister expressed the hope that his visit can inject fresh momentum for bilateral cooperation. Thank you, Presidency, for welcoming me and my delegation to Beijing. Singapore and China have continued to work with each other and to support one another, and our relationship has only grown stronger. I am confident that your economy will continue to strengthen. Many countries, including Singapore, are very keen to enhance our economic ties with China, and I hope that my visit will inject fresh momentum for bilateral cooperation and high-level exchanges between us. Li hold an official visit to China after attending an opening ceremony of the Boao Forum for Asia Annual Conference 2023 in southern China Island province of Hainan. Filipino Catholics pray for Pope Francis during Palm Sunday celebrations. Thousands of Filipino Catholics marked the beginning of Holy Week by having their palm fronts blessed by Catholic priests on Palm Sunday, April the 2nd, and praying for Pope Francis' health. At the Catholic Church in Antipolo City, about 20 kilometers east of Manila, hundreds of devotees attended the morning Mass and waved their palm fronts as a sign of discipleship and remembrance of Jesus Christ. The blessed palms are later placed outside their houses in the belief that it will ward off evil spirits. Filipino Catholics also prayed for Pope Francis' health after he was hospitalized due to breathing difficulties. The Holy Week, which begins from Palm Sunday and ends on Easter Sunday, marks the last week of Lent during which Christians are called on to fast, pray and give alms to the needy. Roman Catholics comprise about 80% of more than 110 million Philippine population. Thank you folks, have a lovely week this ahead, stay safe and stay healthy.